What's up guys? If you're in real estate, you know that this business is constantly pulling you in all sorts of different directions. Well, in this video guys, we're going to break down our top productivity tips that we use on a daily basis and show you guys exactly how we get the most amount of stuff done in the shortest amount of time in our real estate business. Stay tuned. All right. So if you guys are watching this, our real estate agents, then you know, this business pulls us a ton of different directions all the time from marketing to working with clients and showing homes to lead gen and prospecting. There is so much to do. And one of the most common questions that we get is from agents that really just don't know exactly where to start or where they should be putting their focus on a daily basis. So we wanted to put this video together for you guys, breaking down exactly how we handle our business and some of the tips that we've helped other agents incorporate into their uh, daily routine so that they then can get the most amount of stuff done and really just lay out a clear game plan for what you should be executing upon on a daily basis, all right? So diving into it, one of the first things you're going to want to do is start off with figuring out what your morning routine is, okay? Now I'm not talking about you know, meditating and journaling and cold plunging and all that stuff. If that's something you want to incorporate, by all means, go right ahead. But don't think that you need to get, uh, you know, just really crazy with, with the morning routine in order to maximize or get the most out of your day. Believe it or not, some of the most successful people we know don't have any sort of, you know, morning rituals like journaling or meditation or anything like that. This is just going to be a very, very personal thing to you guys. So it's important to figure out what works best for you and not necessarily feel pressure to do something just because, you know, Tony Robbins does it or something like that. So to give you guys an insight as to what my morning routine looks like, once I get up, which I'm getting up usually anywhere from 5 to 6 a.m., before I go work out, and this is going to be, you know, contrary to a lot of the stuff that you're going to hear out there before I even go work out or step in the gym or anything like that. The first that I'm doing, first thing I'm doing is opening up my computer. I'm getting into my emails and I'm handling anything that is urgent. Okay. So any emails that came in the night before, potentially that morning, if there's anything that I feel is going to be distracting me from my workout after that, I'm addressing those things first. And usually it's just, 15 to 20 or maybe 30 minutes max for me to bang out some emails, handle a couple of things. And then just by getting that initial, uh, you know, burst of work done in the morning. Now, when I do go to the gym, my head is clear and I can be way more intentional and focused and productive when I'm at the gym. In the past, I used to just go straight to the gym and I would find myself just thinking about these things or, you know, trying to send an email when, when I'm at the gym or something like that, guys. And it's just not productive, right? It's not an effective work email. It's not an effective workout. Neither one of those things is being as effective as it should be. So personally, I find it easiest if I just get some work done in the morning and then I can go hit the gym. Now from there, guys, I'm working out for just about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I'm usually getting to the office at about eight or 8.30. Now, once I get to the office, the first thing that I do is I sit down and I prioritize my tasks for the day, okay? Now, what I've got here is a basic, to-do list. Okay. And what you're going to find here is I have a top three tasks I need to perform and then just some uh, other checklist down below. Okay. So what I do here is I make sure that I identify the top three things that I must accomplish that day. The things that are going to move the needle the most or the things that are the highest income producing activities for me to do. Those three go on top and then I prioritize the rest after that. Those are still things I need to get done, but the way I look at it is that the, our, as in real estate, our days are so unpredictable and it can quickly go awry. As you guys all know, there's one phone call from a client or, or from an agent on the other side of a transaction. And now the rest of your day is spent putting out this fire. So I love having those top three identifiers uh, because if I get those top three tasks done, my day is a win regardless of what happens with the rest of the day. Okay. So that's one of my biggest tips for you guys. Choose the big three tasks that you must get done that day. No matter what, they're going to move the needle the most in your business. Then from there, prioritize the rest of the tasks. I prefer going from easiest tasks down to hardest so that I can just get those easy ones done and out of the way the fastest. Moving right along, the second pillar that you guys need to be focusing on to stay most productive and effective is working on your time blocking. Now, if you guys 
aren't familiar with time blocking, which I think most of you probably are, time blocking is where you take your calendar, and we work out of Google Calendar, that's where you take your calendar and you schedule out reoccurring appointments with yourself to handle tasks and you block off certain amounts of times to do those tasks. For example, uh, we do a ton of content. Will and I have two two-hour time blocks throughout the week on, on Wednesdays and Fridays where we film all our content for the week. And if we didn't have that time blocked off, it is so easy to book other appointments during that during your day and then you're not getting the things done that, that you need to. So what you want to do is you want to look and identify, again, the highest income producing activities for you guys, whether that's prospecting or lead gen or client follow up or creating content for YouTube, creating content for social media, and you need to book those as reoccurring appointments in your Google Calendar. Now, if you guys aren't working out of a calendar, you need to start doing that immediately because hands down, that is the best thing that you could start doing for your business today that will have the greatest impact, especially over time, guys. And I can't tell you how important it is. And at this point, since we've been following our calendar for so long, if it's not in the calendar, it's not happening. So not only do I have all of our income producing activities time blocked in there, but I use it for personal things too. So if we have, if I have a date night with my wife, that's going in there. If I'm, you know, taking my son out somewhere uh, important, I need to make sure that I'm having one-on-one -on -one time with him every week. I'm booking that in the calendar as a recurring appointment so that I know it's going to happen. Our workouts go in there. And then because Will and I are partners, I have my individual calendar, he has his individual calendar, and then we have a calendar together, and then all of those calendars connect and talk to each other through Google. So if you guys aren't doing that, you absolutely need to start doing that, and then all of these things in your business, you need to start blocking those into time blocks on the calendar, and if you found yourself just not executing on the tasks that you know that you've needed to, and you know maybe you've had a to-do list and you've just never gotten around to doing them, chances are you're not putting it in your calendar, okay? Now, one other thing to time blocking that is very important that I learned is that you need to block off some white space. Now, what do I mean by blocking off white space? Well, a few years ago, I was so dedicated to my time blocking that I would literally time block the entire workday, you know, start to bottom, and inclu including like client appointments and stuff like that. But the problem was if I got a phone call or something happened unexpected, which happens all the time in real estate, it really threw me for a loop and I didn't have time to incorporate it because all of my gaps were, were full in the calendar. So what I started doing was I started blocking in just a one hour white space. Uh, and it, for me, I put it, it says client work. And what that allows you to do is stay focused on the task at hand that's in your time block. So for example, if you have you know prospecting from nine to 11 every morning, if you get that phone call from a client that needs something, right? Hey, stick to your prospecting. Don't deviate and go and handle that phone call initially, right? That's being reactive to our schedule, not proactive. However, if you have that 12 o'clock or one o'clock uh, white space blocked off in your calendar, now you can return that phone call during that white space. So use that white space for kind of the unpredictable things that pop up. Now in real estate, there's no emergencies, right? No one's dying in real estate. so. If your client has an issue on a property, but you're in the middle of your prospecting time block or your content creation time block, stay focused on the task at hand. You've got that white space coming up in the calendar, okay? So just respect your calendar, live out of the calendar. It takes a little bit of uh, warming up to get used to it if you guys haven't done it, but once you've made the commitment to just making all those appointments with yourself and your clients, Guys, it's never going back and your business is gonna start running super smooth from there. Now, the next pillar that we're gonna focus on is documenting and delegating, okay? Now, you're not always gonna be jumping right to delegating, but you need to start documenting. Now, what do I mean by documenting? I mean taking the job of real estate that you've created for yourself and turning it into a real business. Now, here's the deal. You guys may be asking, what's the difference? Well, hey, until someone can come to you and offer to buy your company. And you can then hand them your company, all the training, all the systems, all the processes, all the procedures, have all the people in place, and you walk away. If you can't do that, you guys don't have a business, you have a job that you've created for yourself, okay? So one of the biggest things, guys, is that as real estate agents, you need to start looking at 
this career as not a job, but a business. So that means that you need to start documenting every little thing that you do. So here's how this is really gonna help with your productivity and really help your business scale to the next level. I want you guys to take 14 days, okay? Take two weeks, keep a notepad in your phone, and just document, just write down every little thing that you're doing. Everything from uh, booking showings, doing a CMA, writing contracts, uh, scheduling photographers, scheduling inspectors, uh, organizing your email, unsubscribing from uh, you know junk mail, uh, going through your spam folder. All of those little things, guys, are little tasks that you really need to start documenting to see where the majority of your time is going and then ultimately creating systems so that we can delegate that out. Now, once you've taken those two weeks and you've listed every little thing that you do throughout your day, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go and open up a, uh, a spreadsheet and you're gonna create some different columns, okay? Those columns are gonna be daily, weekly, monthly, as needed, and once. And then what you're going to do, you then are going to take all of those tasks and you're going to put them into those columns based on the frequency that you do those things. So for example, scheduling inspectors and scheduling you know, photographers, those are gonna be as needed tasks. As we have a new buyer that goes under contract or a new listing that comes up, those are things that need to get done on a regular basis, but it's just as needed, okay? Now, going through and uh, you know, going through your emails, responding to emails, that's gonna be a daily task. Monthly tasks might be financial reportings or you know, looking at your production or, hey, what clients do we have that are now 60 days out that we need to be touching base with right now, okay? All of those little like follow-up procedures and stuff, those are going to be on a daily basis or monthly basis or weekly basis. Start organizing those however you want to structure your business. Now, the last thing you're gonna do with that, guys, is you are going to go to loom.com, L-O-O-M.com, and you're gonna start creating recordings, training videos of every single one of those tasks. Now, there's a couple reasons that we're doing this. The primary reason is that so that you can grow, scale, and then delegate those tasks out to a virtual assistant or an in-person assistant at some point. Maybe you're not quite there yet, but that's okay. Even if you're early in your career, guys, I can't stress this enough. This is a practice that you guys should be doing because this is really going to give you a perspective on tasks that need to be you or could be somebody else, okay? And then on top of that, guys, it's so much easier to do this in an earlier phase of your career than later when you're so busy and it's hard to make all these training videos because here's the thing guys, at some point, if you really want to scale who you are as a real estate agent and you need to be focused on the highest income producing activities, which is going on uh, you know, buyer appointments, going on seller appointments, it's, it's gonna be your, your social media content, your YouTube content, those are all things that 100% need to be you, they can't be somebody else. So that means if it's anything else outside of those uh, you know, things that can only be you, you need to start growing into hiring a virtual assistant, which you can do for four or five dollars per hour. We've got three virtual assistants that work with us and by far guys, that's one of the best things that we've ever done for our business. Now the last thing here that you guys need to be focused on is batching tasks. Now, you may have heard of the term batching before. It's used a lot in, in content to where, hey, if you've got uh, you know, social media content for, to produce, it's a hundred times easier to sit in front of a camera just like this and do four, five, 10 videos all at one time instead of going through all the hassle of setting up the cameras and the lights and the background and all that stuff just to do one video. While I'm sitting here in front of this camera, I might as well make more videos, okay? That's utilizing your time effectively. But not only can you batch content like this, you can batch any of your tasks. So maybe you've got a newsletter put together. Instead of taking the time every week to sit down and write this one singular newsletter, take a couple hours on a Saturday and put 10 or 20 of them together and then schedule them all to go out in one week increments, okay? You just took two hours and got two, three months worth of work done all at once. Now maybe it's client follow-up as well. Instead of just following up with one or two clients here and there, have some dedicated times throughout the week where you can make those 10, 15, 20 phone calls. And then over the course of 
those 30 days, guys, you've hit your whole database and then you can do that every single quarter. So I want you guys to start looking at your business, looking at all the tasks that you're doing and think, okay, what can I just take a couple hours and do and get months work worth of work done and get months worth of work done in just a couple hours and you guys would be so surprised at how once you start getting a few repetitions of video or content or those phone calls with clients or the newsletter, the flow state that you guys can get into and then the work just starts flowing, it becomes faster, it becomes better, it becomes just more efficient. Guys, that is just one thing. Batch as much of your day as possible. No. So guys, batch as much of your tasks as possible and just watch how much more you can accomplish in a short amount of time. So that's it for today, guys. I hope these tips were beneficial to you and your business. As always, if you guys have any questions at all, leave a comment below, shoot us a DM, uh, come track us down on, on Instagram, my business partner, Will Grimes, or myself, Eli Schmidt. We are the Legit Agents. Appreciate you guys watching this video. See you in the next one.